the Dead America podcast is really about finding yourself, challenging who you are, understanding what you want to be. To do that, you really have to get in tune with yourself. Sometimes we need help doing that. Our next guest, Aaron, is going to help us do exactly that. So let's not waste any time and get into this episode of the Dead America Podcast. Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be around this wild, wacky, and sometimes disturbing world of ours. Yes, that's the intro to the Mindset Podcast, a weekly attempt to open eyes and shedding light on what's really going on in the world, all done by ripping apart the media madness that masquerades as news. Join me, Gareth Davis, every Sunday on the Mindset Podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting services such as iTunes, Stitcher, and so on. Or you can go directly to the main Mindset website. That's www.mindsetcentral.com. Check out the Mindset Podcast. Bring your curiosity, your opinions, and a sense of humor. And remember that some worldviews are stranger than others. To overcome, you must educate. Educate not only yourself, but educate anyone seeking to learn. We are all dead America. We can all learn something. To learn, we must challenge what we already understand. The way we do that is through conversation. Sometimes we have conversations with others. However, some of the best conversations happen with ourselves. Reach out and challenge yourself. Let's dive in and learn something right now. And today we have a special treat for you. We are with Erin Nicola. She is a thought leader and a spiritual advisor. Erin, could you please introduce yourself and let people know what you do and how you got to where you are today? Well, first, I want to say thanks for having me, and um, it's super important to have these platforms so that we can talk about the things that I think are the most important that nobody talks about or very few people talk about. So thank you for having me, and thank you for having a platform for people to learn about this life and what's really going on. So uh, as Ed mentioned, I am a, um, you know, it's the labels that kill me. Um, I am a thought leader and a spiritual advisor. I am a coach, a mentor. I work typically with entrepreneurs because I have been one for 20 years. And um, I've been consulting businesses and business owners for about 16 years. And most people would not put that together, (laughs) business and spirituality. But the reality is, is, as much as we like to be separate from our business and our personal lives, they're in, intertwined all the time. That's just who we are as human beings, and there's no way to do that different. And the reason that I got to this place is because I had a business that I sold a couple of years ago that uh, was very successful and had a lot of moving parts, lots of clients, hundreds of clients, lots of employees. And my experience of running that business was one of stress, anxiety, worry. I was constantly in stress over clients, employees, beholden to all those things. And I really couldn't take it anymore, basically. I just was so stressed out. Prior to that, I had had an anxiety disorder years before that that um, I had recognized why it had happened on some level, but I wanted to go into a deeper dive on why that happened because for me, I felt like I was recreating that anxiety stress level again. And the reality is, is it's just like any addiction where you could stop drinking or doing drugs and 
while you're not doing those things, mentally, you're still, all those behaviors that led to that are present. And that's why things like AA and those sorts of things where you go through steps and you go through a journey and you really take a look and unpack all of those things that led you to that place are so important. And so what led me to being an entrepreneur was that I had had this anxiety disorder. I had overcome it chemically. And I thought if I move to Hawaii and start my own business, I would have a simpler life. And what I want to tell people is that simpler, anxiety-free, and worry-free, and overwhelm-free does not exist in a location. <laughs> so you can move to paradise, you can move to a deserted island, and guess what? You're still there. So the work really is internal. And so that's why I work with people the way I do. Because if I could show you how to have an impenetrable internal experience of joy, no matter what was going on in your life, wouldn't that be amazing? You would no longer be beholden to people or circumstances, and you'd be able to really understand who you are and what's going on in this world. Does that make sense? Yes, it does to me. It's a wonderful, actually, the platform you just outlined we need tremendously in this world, especially today, there is so much visceral hate and destructive nature just within our own selves. Finding that inner peace and that joy within ourselves, just being free from everything and being able to cope with who you are, that's important for us all. How did you find yourself within that realm of a new beginning? Of course, just like everything, it's an evolution of things, right? So I had the anxiety disorder, chemically got over it, mentally still there, <laughs> creating like super stressful life, did my business for about 10 years, high octane, completely stressed out. But, um, and while it was successful, I was miserable. And I finally, I don't know, there was just a moment 10 years in that I just went, okay, I'm going to start to try and um, navigate this business slightly differently. First of all, I'm not going to allow any client to come into my business that doesn't appreciate me, my staff, and the service that we're providing period. And I will just, I will have that conversation on the phone from moment one and let people know. And then I got super clear on who we were as a business. But then while that was going on personally, I was doing a lot of self-development work. I was going to seminars and reading a whole lot. And um, I got involved with a seminar company and it was a beautiful foundational piece to understanding that there's more to this life than what we, this bill of goods we've been sold about happiness being in locations, about happiness being when we have, you know, the car, the house, the relationship, the whatever, then you'll be happy. And so I started to recognize within myself that I was like, felt like I was on fire all the time. Like I've always been super goal oriented, but I would just, you know, set an audacious goal grasp it, be happy for a moment, and then be off to the races to the next one. And that started to become super exhausting, like only because I would do not only financial goals, business goals, personal goals, like I found myself, um, I was training for a half Ironman, I was completely exhausted. And I remember like that voice inside my gut just going like, you are so tired, quit working out so hard, quit, you know, and I ended up getting a concussion. And so I started to have these little moments of like, what are you doing? Like, wh why are you killing yourself? <laughs> Literally, you know, trying to attain these goals. And so that started the evolution. And then shortly after that, I was going through a divorce and it just leveled me, which had nothing really to do with the divorce. It was just the opportunity for me to take a look even deeper and so I had decided that I was going to do that book. Um, I always have a hard time remembering the book. Anyway, it will come to me. 
Um, but basically the book is, um, it has 365 passages. It's meant to be done over a year. So you read a passage and then you each day, and then you, you know, take that in. And the experience I had was I would sit every morning at the beach and read the passage. And it was almost as though all I could read in that book were these bold letters coming off of the page that said, the path is joy. You're meant to be in joy. Joy is the answer. And I literally, and I, after that experience, I went, okay, enough. I hear you. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. It makes sense to me, but I don't know how to get there. So from there, I, um, I went to, um, oh, it's called The Course in Miracles is the book, which, you know, aptly, <laughs> aptly named. Um, so from there, I had gotten an email from um, Mike Dooley, who is also a thought leader and somebody that I had followed. I'd met him through a seminar company and seen him speak several times. Uh, he sent an email saying that he was going to be on Oahu and he was going to have a seminar and would I be interested in going. And I signed up not knowing what it was. As it turns out, it was a seminar on the visualization process that he teaches, and it's similar to the one that I teach as well now. And I went home, and I, my entire life just lined up. I started the visualization process, and everything that I had been working on and wanted to happen, like, literally happened within a matter of weeks. And I just went, whoa, <laughs> that's so crazy. And then um, he sent another email saying, would you like to become a trainer and come take the course on how to teach my course? And um, I did. And I came back and I put on my first workshop and five minutes in, I ditched my notes. And every, it was a like a moment where everything I had ever learned came to me all at once. And I just went, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to help people recognize that this life is beautiful. It's beautiful right now. It doesn't have anything to do with amassing, you know, wealth or stuff, or it has to do with creating a deep, meaningful relationship with yourself and healing those parts of yourself that don't serve that future that you want to create. That journey is hard for some of us to even take. I myself, I went through an injury and I always felt like I was on top of the world. And when something puts us through this tumultuous area that we've never been, it devastates us, man, woman, child, whatever. These neural paths that are firing on us, they are definitely something that we have to deal with. So I know self-discovery for me was a big deal and facing those things that I thought I knew, it was really challenging. How hard was it for you to get past the things you already knew to free yourself for the new thoughts, the new foundations, the new life? Yeah, I mean, first I'd like to say nobody's life is easy. It's, it, we're here to be like, um, as Gary Zukoff says, on the earth school. We're in the earth school. <laughs> this is a school. It's for the benefit of our evolution spiritually. And we've made it about all these other things, but this is the, this is the work. And it is work. And it's not work as in a four-letter bad word. It's work as in this is delightful because this is when we create true freedom for ourselves. When we can understand that we have underlying beliefs that are running the show for us without us even challenging them and get recognition around that and understand that when you have a belief that tells you what this world looks like, the lens or the filter in which you see everybody and everything, then it becomes a whole different ballgame, right? It becomes more about I am empowered to create this other thing, but it really is about the freedom, right? It's about the freedom to knowing that you get to have emotions and be in reaction to people, but understanding what it means versus thinking that that is who you are. The deepest essence of who you are is not your thoughts, is not your emotions, are not these 
um, circumstances that are coming into your life, you are the essence of something greater. And so uh, somehow, like we came into this world knowing that you see little kids. I mean, they're amazing. They're beautiful. I love watching them because they're free. They're not worried about the future. They're not worried about, you know, and they don't have as many responsibilities as we do as adults, but they're unencumbered. Like what happens is we begin to like formulate in this world is we add on all this junk and we think, and it's not our fault. Let me just start with that. Like, please do not go to the blame, shame, any of that stuff. It's not about that. What it's about is recognition that you can change the thoughts that are creating your reality. You can recognize that your emotions are signaling that your beliefs have been poked. That's it. And when you create separation between yourself and your emotions and your thoughts, then you can have that true freedom. And let me tell you why you know you are not your thoughts and emotions. It's because you can think a thought and know what that thought is. You can have an emotion and label that emotion. So who is that? that's doing that. That's who you are. That's the essence of who you are. But these belief structures, what they've done is they've said, this is what life should look like. If I give you a gift, you should say thank you. If you don't say thank you, I'm offended. That's a belief structure. You may call it rude or impolite, but it is a belief structure. If I give a gift and you don't say thank you, that has absolutely nothing to do with that other person. If I'm giving a gift, I should be giving the gift to be giving a gift because it makes me feel good, not for the response of thank you. And so when we recognize that all of this stuff is playing in the background and can really like single it out and work on these individual emotions and really dig in, then we can release them and begin to experience this life very, very differently. Does that make any sense? That's excellent advice. I, I like how you put that. And, you know, learning to do things because you enjoy them instead of having to do them, that can change lives right there. If we try to do things that we enjoy and surround our things with the things that we enjoy, a lot of that negativity doesn't even come into existence. The power of positivity, it's, it's a work of art when you apply it properly. Do you have tips for people to overcome these negative feelings that they have and how to transfer it to a positive outlook into life? Yeah, and first I want to say we have sort of have this disease here in America. I don't know about other countries, but this idea that we're not allowed to have a bad feeling. We need to cover it up with something positive. And I'm all for positive. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm 100% all in. But what I want to say is if you go to the positive before you acknowledge what's actually going on, then it's just a Band-Aid. It's just might as well be a drink, might as well be a drug, it might as well be sex, might as well be any kind of addiction, shopping, whatever, to cover up that deeper emotion that is coming to the surface. And so um, there's many different strategies that I teach people in terms of, you know, getting to the positive of each of the things. But one of the things I'll say is, uh, one of the things that I teach is EFT, which is tapping. Um, it's emotional freedom technique. It's using the meridians, the energetic meridians in your body that like acupuncture and acupressure use to um, tap into the subconscious mind and um, release these old beliefs. The first part of that is always about acknowledging where where am I with this, right? Before you release it, instead of just going, let me insert all the positive affirmations. No, let me get rid of this thing and then put in the positive things, right? Because that energy still exists that coexists with the new that you're putting in and it's um, less pure. 
uh, sort of in a way. So, you know, and then other strategies I use are just, um, here's a strategy that I love to teach people all the time. It's very simple. It's taking each moment that you, like when you start your day, and being in like an enormous amount of gratitude for every little thing that you're doing, right? So I wake up in the morning, I open my eyes, I say thank you for the pillow and the comfortable bed and the warm covers and the heat in the house and the shelter and um, the fact that my body moves and I can get up and for running water and that I can brush my teeth. And so that I can make coffee and I have food, that's fantastic, right? Because the most people are spending the majority of their day in reaction to the things that aren't working out in their lives. When there are like hundreds and thousands of things that are working, right? I woke up, I'm alive, I can breathe, I have water to drink, I have food, I have shelter, I have a telephone, we can have this conversation, you know? Um, when we get to focusing on what's going right, which is like a whole host of things, like massive amounts of things going right. But for whatever reason, just like, I mean, I assume everybody had the same experience as me or very similar where, you know, you were taught to talk about the things that aren't going well. My folks didn't come home from work and say, wow, I had a fantastic day. Everything went absolutely right. There was this one thing, but it was no big deal, right? It was always like, oh, I had to sit in traffic. And then there was a con uh, conflict with a colleague and this client was upset. And right. And we talk about those things all the time, but we don't give enough airplay time to the stuff that is going right. And so I have very different, you know, when I go yesterday, I went grocery shopping. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful that I we have food now. We have food in the house. That's fantastic. I could, you know, go to the store. I could have had a different experience. I could have said, oh, I had to wait in line outside of the store because of the whole COVID thing and don't get me started on that. And, you know, mm. but no, it was what a fantastic opportunity for me to wait and be with myself and quiet for a moment. You know, the universe provides all these things all the time, opportunities for us to have patience opportunities for us to um, allow other people to be who they are, but we don't take them up on that. We just, we look at it very differently. And so when you come from a place of gratitude where you're just like, well, look at all these wonderful things that are in my life, literal things and people and experiences, then it's a very different experience. Yeah. Interesting take. The other day I spoke with Dr. Bada about, the intermittent mm -hmm. silence and practicing just being silent, you know, 10 minutes a day. And that was a very interesting take also challenging yourself to be in a quiet place and bring your thoughts together. And I think if we learn to actually do that before we react, you know, it could be a better life if we start doing that. A lot of us take our emotions and we react with emotions, like you said, especially now with us being locked down with the COVID and this presidential things going on. A lot of us don't know how to quiet our mind. How how do we get to a point where we can observe these quiet times? So for me, um, another strategy that I'll teach people is being in the present moment. And the easiest way that I know how to do that is to um, look at something like on my desk, I have a plant and I'll I'll uh, take a moment and I'll look at the plant and I'll really, I mean, like really look at it with curiosity or a flower or something in nature. I mean, really look at it like, you know, and be curious about uh, why are there veins in this leaf? Why is it this color, you know, and really just like looking at all the details of the plant. And when you do that, it brings you to present moment because you've quieted the mind. 
and you're just going, oh, and what I mean by quiet is the mind. It's quieting that voice in your head that is nonstop jabbering about all the things that are not going well, the beliefs that, you know, all have to do, we all have the same. They're underlying the the lowest basis level of belief that I believe every human has is I'm not good enough. I don't deserve. I'm not lovable, which I think are basically the same thing. I am not good enough. I don't deserve. I don't deserve this life. I don't deserve what's in it. Um, And so when we can focus in on something like that for just that moment, that's, that's what it feels like to be still. And when you can quiet that jabbering of the mind that's telling you all the bad stuff um, and then connect to those moments, that's how I created stillness, both through learning how to do meditation, which is quieting the mind. That's the purpose of meditation. Um, I would intentionally, and it took a long time. I'm not going to lie. My, my mind and people who have anxiety, overwhelm, or overly stressed, they're overthinkers. Everybody I work with that has these um, ailments, or for lack of a better word, are they're overthinking life. And when you understand some of what we talked about before, which is that you know your beliefs are running, your experience, your actions, your thoughts, all of those are connected, and you can create space from them, and you can meditate and start to quiet that mind. For me, that meditation process was super challenging because my mind was always going a million miles a minute. And what I had to do was start, I actually started with uh, Oprah and Deepak Chopra do a um, 21 free day meditation thing. And it's 15 minutes, they talk about a subject and then they give a mantra. And it was the mantra that helped me because every time I caught my mind going to a thought, I would say the mantra again, and then it would get quiet, and then I would say the mantra again. So it, it took just like everything. It takes practice. We practice these ways of being for so long, we have to let go of the habit of being this other way and start a new habit. And so the meditation, it took me... Uh, I'm not going to lie, to really get quiet, it took me um, a couple of years to just stop the chattering. And now the background of my life is still. Like there's not that much going on. And when I do notice that there's a lot going on, I can hear it immediately and go, oh. But it's a practice, again, like knowing that you have a voice in your head, knowing that most of the stuff it's saying is not positive. (laughs) You know, these are all like, this is an awareness that, you know, now that we have conversations like this, people can start to take notice. Oh, that's interesting. I'm, but the other signal is your emotions. So if you're having like low level emotions, anything that doesn't feel good, that's signaling something too. It's poking at a belief and that's an opportunity to go inward versus outward, which is what most people do. You did this, you made me feel this way. That traffic made me mad. You didn't put on your signal. I'm mad at you. It's your fault. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. You know, when we start looking at things and having conversations, that's kind of what the Dead America podcast is about, bringing people in that have experienced things and are willing to share them. You've got a lot of good insight. What What can we look forward to from Aaron in the future? Um, Well, I'll definitely be doing some online courses. Um, I've been doing them for several years now, and um, I haven't set up a date yet, but I will post on social media. So um, if you want to do a super deep dive, I do one-on-one client coaching. Um, I, I think it's, you know, I think it's if you're listening to this podcast or you're listening to things like this or you're, you know, looking for books, if you're seeking, it's it's time. It's your time. You're here for a reason. Um, this is what life is about. It's not about the things that we've been told it's about. It's not about amassing things. And I'm to- totally for abundance in all ways. But 
the happiness isn't there. And so if you can get this thing nicked now where you can create joy internally and not be beholden to everybody and everything around you, like this is why we're here. So you can take a deep dive with me um, personally, one-on-one, -on -one, um, and then I'll have some courses coming up this year. I um, also, when I'm on a podcast, I give away a free um, discovery call. It's a 30 minute, um, it's not a sales call. It's how can I be of service to you? If there's something that you want to discuss um, and you think that I might be able to help get you on the right track, I um, that brings me joy. So um, I hope that people will take advantage of that. That's really awesome. I love people helping people. And that's what I try to surround myself with, the power of giving. And people need to understand life is not easy, and we're living it together. We need to learn to get along. So, Aaron, how can people get a hold of you? So I think the best way to get me is on Instagram. Um, my handle is Aaron, E-R-I-N, Mac, M-A-C, L-L-C. And I have a ton of content on there. I love Instagram for that. Um, I post IGTV videos all the time um, with content, just massive content, because this is not a secret. I don't need to keep it for myself. I want really to help people. I really want to help people heal themselves so that they can enjoy this life now and not wait until they have the things they think they need in order to feel good about themselves. Um, and also my website is, the link is on there as well. All right. Well, I do thank you for being with us on Dead America. And I will leave all the links in the show notes for Aaron. Get, reach out to her. Get involved. Aaron, thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for having me, giving me another opportunity to give back. Um, it absolutely brings me joy. And thanks for having platforms like this. It's very important to have these conversations. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this podcast enlightening, entertaining, educational in any way, please share, like, subscribe, and join us right back here next week for another great episode of Dead America Podcast. I'm Ed Waters, your host. Enjoy your afternoon, wherever you may be.